everybody, welcome back to Rain and Pause. I'm Mitch and today I am starting a big massive project. Um, I have just bought a cafe and I am making all of the tables myself. So what better way to do that than to cut them all out and show you my process. So what I have here is a series of different size tables. This one for example is a 700 by 600 millimeter table. And what I've done is I've cut this out of um, 16 millimeter MDF. I've rounded over the edges with my router. So these are nice and smooth and I've sanded the edges flat. Now, because I've done that, everything is a little bit dusty. So I'm going to take my microfiber cloth and I'm just going to give it a quick wipe over. Now the microfiber cloth will catch and grab on the edges. So you just have to be careful with it. And I'm going to do both sides and just give this a light wipe down to catch any sawdust that I didn't vacuum up uh, when I was outside. And I'm going to start by varnishing the MDF and that's going to seal it so that when I paint, my paint isn't going to warp the boards. So this is a big, big table that I have here. This one is 700, uh, 600 millimeters by 1200 millimeters. This is going to be a big booth seat. We are building everything from scratch ourselves, <laughs> so it's a big undertaking. And again, I'm going to do both sides. And this will just stop any dust, any sawdust getting trapped in the varnish and making um, weird textures in the paint. All right, so now that I've got that wiped down, I'm going to start by applying some uh, gloss-based varnish. Now, the one that I'm using is just a cheap gloss-based varnish. This isn't going to be the final finish on the this isn't going to be the final finish on the piece by any means. Um, so I'm just giving it a really good shake to incorporate everything as per the package directions. And they'll say to mix it for about five minutes, but a decent shake should be enough. All right, I'm going to use my little canvas key to open the can. And so the idea behind this is I am sealing the wood with this glossy base component. And what that will do is prevent the paint from warping the board because they are quite big um, and it can warp uh, as it dries. And I don't want that to happen. I want everything to stay nice and flat. So it doesn't matter that we have bubbles. Now in this package, I have some high density foam rollers. And these are perfect for applying varnish. I've, I discovered these couple of months ago and they're absolutely amazing so this is what the label looks like here in Australia they're trade 160 high density foam roller covers and I've got myself a little roller here now I have set up already I've got two tables plus this one so I've got three tables going I've got two long tables to do and um, a couple of smaller ones so I'm going to put this into a container of some sort so that I can easily roll it onto my surface. And I don't know if I have a container of some sort. Oh, you know what? That'll be perfect. Okay. So I have here a little Chinese container lid and I'm going to put this off to one side. I've got another small table here set up. And I'm going to use this little attachment. This goes onto the edge of the container, of the paint tin, sorry. And what this does is it form fits around the edge and gives you a nice pouring lip so that nothing spills out. Okay. I'm going to pour a little bit into my lid here. And then I'm going to get my roller. Make sure that the roller is nice and even covered. And again, because this isn't the final finish, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's going to be a seal coat. And what this will do is will block all of the wood fibers from receiving any moisture. And I'm just going to use that to push into here. And you know what? Because I have such a large surface area to cover, I'm just gonna pour this straight on. Why not? Now this is a bit different to when you would be applying varnish as a final coat because you want your final coat to be nice and smooth and even. This is going to seal everything up so we want the wood to soak it up 
we want the wood to um, absorb all of this varnish. And because it is a plastic, um, a plastic based varnish or a gloss based varnish, uh, when it dries, it will block the wood fibers with the plastic. And that will mean that nothing will get in there. So I'm doing the underside first, and I'm gonna do two coats on the underside of each table. And the reason I'm doing the underside first is so that I can flip it over and when I'm ready to do the tops, I can do the entire process on the top. That will also mean that while this is upside down, I can tape it off and make sure I don't get any drips underneath. So as you can see, I'm just going over the same areas a couple of times, really working this varnish into it. And I'm not being particularly careful or cautious because again, it's just a seal coat. And you just want to work it in, make sure it's nice and even, but not being too cautious. Now for the edges, I am going to do the edges at every stage. So part of the undoing of varnishing can be your edges. So if you haven't done your edges, the moisture can still seep in there and that can cause warping. So I'm just running the sponge along the side getting it nice and covered and I'll suck up the excess from the top here okay just stamp it on wipe it away and the varnish I'm using is just a cheap gloss varnish I didn't want to use my Jo Sonia for this because that would be a waste of an art product when all I'm trying to do is block the pores in the wood. And it doesn't have to be a professional looking finish. Okay, that's pretty much done. It's that easy and that quick. So I can see that, you know, I haven't done the best job on the sides. The sides are gonna get coated, like I said, every single time. So they will be gone over multiple times. This now looks nice and even coated. So I'm gonna give this a couple of hours to soak in and dry, maybe three to four hours, and then I will come back and do a second coat. So I will see you then. All right, everybody, we're back. Now, what I didn't show you before was how I store my roller in between uses. I got this from Molly's Artistry. So what she does when she's done with using her sponge for applying varnish, she puts her sponge inside a Ziploc bag and that way it keeps it nice and um, nice and damp nice and moist and you don't have to worry about cleaning it every single time so the varnish isn't going to dry out in there now it's been maybe four or five hours since I've been in here and so the varnish is nice and dry and it actually dried really really quickly I was quite surprised by that um, and because we've used the roller it's in a very nice evenly distributed coat so now all I'm going to do is put a second coat on this I'm just going to use the same method I did before. I'm going to pour some out and spread it all over. Now, what you can do is if this is going to be the final surface that you're um, painting on, you will need to sand it down. So if you run your fingers along it, I can feel little lumps and bumps and ridges in this. Um, because this is the bottom, I'm not going to bother sanding anything. If it was the top, I definitely would. Now, I'm going to use some wood round cutouts that I have lying around. I've done it with the other pieces uh, that I have put varnish on today. I didn't do it with this one. I just raised them up off the bench a little bit and that's just gonna give it some clearance uh, for when the varnish uh, uh, gets applied to the side. So I'm not varnishing the bench as well. So it doesn't have to be overly stable just so it's lifted up a little bit and the wood rounds aren't going to get covered in any varnish. Okay, so I'm just going to apply it like I did before. Just pour it into a line and I'm going to push it about with the roller until I've got a nice thick even coverage and this uh, varnish that I'm using is called Mono, uh, Bondol, B-O-N-D-A-L-L, -L, Monocell, water-based clear wood varnish in gloss and I wanted the gloss so that it's nice and 
uh, thick in the coat. Sometimes var uh, satin varnishes can be a little bit thinner. I wanted it nice and thick so that it adheres to the surface and forms a really nice thick barrier to stop all of that warping. So going around the edges and lifting it up off the table has definitely helped. I'm just going to grab any bubbly bits. Now once I have done this side and the bottom is all done, I will lift this up and flip it over and I will sand the edges um, just a little bit because they're going to get four coats of varnish compared to the two that the top and bottom are going to get. That will build up a little bit and it will become a little bit rough and so I want because I want the edges of my tables to be perfectly smooth that will just help out with that. So just going to roll off the excess varnish on my roller onto the other table and um, onto the other pieces that I have. So I'm not putting too much on here and very lightly blending this in on the edge so I don't have too many high spots. Okay, and then I'm just going to push this into the surface, make sure it's all nicely covered. Now, I was actually pretty happy with the first coat and I would have been satisfied just doing one. But because it's going into a cafe, because I know that there is moisture and people spill things, even though I'm going to epoxy the tops, the bottoms aren't going to get any further treatment. So once this is done, this is all that's going to happen. So I'll allow this to dry and then I will tape up the bottom like I normally do for my paintings. And then I will flip them over and pour on the top. So through the power of YouTube editing, you'll get to see that step right about now. Okay, everybody, so it's been a couple of hours and my MDF is now nice and shiny, nice and clear coated and protected from the paint. So now I'm going to tape up just the edges. I'm not fussed if paint gets on the base here. I can always sand that off and re-varnish. Um, but for the edges, I'm going to tape it up so that when I go to remove my resin drips, because I will be epoxying these tables, it's just going to make that so much easier to remove those drips. So I'm just using my blue painter's scotch tape here and I'm putting that as close to the edge as I can. Just laying that down and that's going to help remove all that paint and resin near the edge. Now because it is MDF we can always sand it back if need be. However, I hate doing extra processes. So doing it this way means that we'll eliminate a process. Then with the edge so that I'm not cutting into the wood at all, I'm just going to grab my knife and slide it along the edge. I'll tape this all up. <laughs> I've just applied the tape to the outside of my table here and just use my Stanley knife to go around the edges. And uh, by doing that, what I've done is now created a barrier that's gonna help pull off those resin drips so much easier. Now, the last step before I can flip this over and paint them is to burnish down the edges. So burnishing is where you take a tool or if your finger or something like that and you push the adhesive of the tape deep into the wood and that's gonna ensure a nice even contact Going to allow that adhesive to really really stick and to work the best it can by blocking out any of that paint. So just taking a stir stick, a paddle pop stick, anything flat, a lot of people use a spoon, uh, the back of a spoon, you can definitely do that, and just pushing along the very edge where the paint will go. And it's that quick, that easy. I've already done all of my other boards so they are ready to flip coated on the other side and you can instantly tell the difference between which side has been coated and which side has not. So you can see this is so super duper shiny and covered in that layer of clear coat and this one is nice and matte, doesn't have anything on there yet. So that means that it's doing its job, it is working and I'm just flipping over all of my other boards 
ready to paint. Okay. Now my edges don't look too bad, so I don't think they need a sand at this point. I will assess that after my first couple of coats on this. So just running along the edge, seeing if there's any drips. I do see one here. So I'm just going to lightly sand off the varnish to make it nice and smooth. This corner has quite a bit on there. So you just want to check all this before you varnish the top. make sure it's still nice and flat and they are going to get a coat of varnish over the edges so don't worry if you take off a little bit too much because we're about to add that back on now I think my sandpaper is clogged with black paint from earlier so make sure you're using a fresh patch of sandpaper when you do this okay and that looks fine I'll just check over my other boards while I have the sandpaper just sanding away any high spots that may be present um, because that will show up through your paint and especially on the corners so that's where it's most likely to pull when it's upside down especially if you have a rounded over edge like I have done so I'm just trying to make that nice and flat so it's not going to lump up through my paint that's pretty good Alrighty, so they're all sanded now. All those edges are done. I'm going to take my microfiber cloth again and just go over the edges to pick up any bits of sanding paper dust that may be on there because I don't want that on my final piece. And I'm going to wipe up just using a dry paper towel under the edges to get any of that sanding dust off my bench so it doesn't transfer onto my board. So I'll do that for the rest of these just really quickly, just to wipe over to get rid of any of that dust. And like I said, even though we're painting over it, you don't want any extra bits and pieces getting stuck underneath the paint. Okay, so now it's time to apply our third coat of this varnish. And this is the container that I'm using, Monocell water-based clear wood varnish in gloss from Bondor. This only cost me $25 for the can from Bunnings. And I've used about a quarter of it already because these pieces are huge. I may need to go and get a second can, a smaller one, uh, just so I can do the last two pieces that I have. Um, now, take note, this is a wood varnish. This is not an art varnish, so you can't use this over your art pieces it's more for sealing wood and um, furniture so let's pour this on and same process as before just push it around nice long even strokes and just cover the whole surface and I will go over the edges so I won't make you watch this whole process again so I will fast forward that for you Hello everybody, okay, so I am back and I have been <laughs> on a mission this evening. So I've already poured three of the four tables that I have prepared and they are not easy. These things are heavy AF and this one is going to be a challenge. So I have swapped out my big um, tall table for this little trestle table so I can move it around and get around it because they are so big and heavy that I will need to maneuver them from all sides. So I'm going to start with my tin of British Paints Extra White. Now if you remember from the start of this video, we've varnished both sides. I have taped up the bottoms and now I'm going to pour on them. So I varnished these yesterday, both sides. Because the varnish is dry, it's going to block out any of that paint from seeping through. It doesn't have to be cured, it's just forming that plastic layer on the top. So, as I said, I've already poured four of these, or three of these. This is the fourth one and the last one that I can do. I have no more space in my studio. And they are a mission. So a couple of things I've learned is put paint everywhere. 
So I'm going to spread the paint right to the edges and make sure there is a nice flow of paint all the way around. And I'm going to start by filling this cup with some pillow paint. Reason being is that once I've poured the pillow on, I will need this to get around to all of the corners to make sure everything flows nicely. Okay, so before I pour my paint on, I'm going to show you the colors I'm using. So this is my color palette today. I have Matisse Midnight Blue, lovely deep rich blue color. I have Matisse Southern Ocean Blue, so this is like a, a deep turquoise. Really, really lovely. I have Josonia Colony Blue, so it's like a lighter turquoise color. Again, really nice. I have this little piggy Constellation, beautiful purpley color. And then I have two new piggies, these haven't been released yet. I've got this little piggy Aphrodite, which is a gorgeous blush red. So it's a little bit um, paler than Grenache, a little bit more pink than Grenache, but still as rich. It's actually a really nice color. And paired with the second new color, which is Athena, they form with uh, the already released uh, Venus, the three goddesses. So this is Athena, and this is a rose gold color, and it's brilliant, it's a true rose gold. Then I've also got this little piggy, Rose Quartz. And this is an interference rose gold color, so you can't really see it because of the light, but it's there. Then my cell activator today is Matisse Metallic Gold, mixed with Nox Gold by Perlex. So the, per the Perlex Nox Gold just makes it a deeper, richer gold. Okay, so after these are done, that's the last of the biggest tables. And then I have two 800 millimeter by 800 millimeter tables to do, which are still massive and I may not be able to reach the edges, but we're gonna give it a go. So things that I've learnt just before I start is don't put anything underneath this that you want to keep. I stupidly put some placemats that I had laying around the wooden cutouts underneath thinking they'd be fine, they're not gonna get any paint on them. And they did, they're covered in paint. I'm gonna have to probably throw them out, make more, do whatever with those. Um, second thing is don't let the paint dry on the surface. If it dries, it will leave lumps. So I was lucky enough to catch that before anything bad could happen. Um, if you do have lumps on your board, sand it flat. So once it's been varnished, you can sand it flat. Um, it would have soaked all into those pores anyway. And lastly, I'm just dusting off any bits of dust that may be on top because I did have things resting on this. All right, now is the moment of truth and we're going to cover the entire surface of this table with paint and they take a lot of paint so let's start with that and see how much more we need I'm actually going to use my fluid art co spatula to push this out and just make sure it's covering the whole surface nice and evenly so just spreading this out nice thin layer because we are doing a swipe with this we don't need as much pillow but because it is such a massive surface you still need quite a bit of pillow so it's a very delicate balance um, with this you need enough pillow that everything's going to move but not enough that uh, it's going to crack when it dries the problem with this is there is absolutely no way to guess or estimate or tell how much paint you need it's a matter of just go with it. Um, but judging from the other ones that I've done, um, I don't think I've wasted all that much paint, which I'm pretty happy about. So I seem to be estimating it correctly. And we'll go with that. So let's take that. Let's wipe off this swipey tool. And I've got a hell of a lot of uh, paper towel handy to wipe things down and wipe my hands down because what I'm gonna do next is gonna get messy. So let me put down another piece of paper towel. I should have put puppy pads down, but oh well. My floor is absolutely covered in paint. I'm not worried about it. I'll wipe it with alcohol later. So now that we've got that down, I'm going to go in with a little bit more around the edges to help this flow. So the, the troubles that I ran into was particularly the corners. The corners um, is a struggle to reach. So I've put a bit more paint down and I'm just gonna use my hand to cover and paint the sides and also blur that um, ring of paint we've just done because our Australian house paints do dry incredibly quickly 
uh, if we don't work fast, you'll get a ring around where your paint has started to dry already and where the fresh paint uh, is going to push over it. And you may see that in this. So apologi apologies if my head is in the way a lot during this. Hey guys, it's Future Mitch here. Uh, so I don't know what happened, but my recording stopped. So I'm just going to go through what I'm doing uh, from now on. I'm recording this on my computer as I'm editing. <clears throat> so I'm just using my hand to smear that paint around the outside, like I was saying, because our Australian paints dry so quickly. Um, if you don't catch it um, before it's dry, you'll get a ring in your paintings. So it's really important to make sure that you blur that edge in, make sure all of the sides are covered because anything that is not covered uh, when your paint is wet, you can't fix. Another thing that I learned is even if your paint has only been sitting for 10 or 15 minutes, don't go back and try to pull anything out of your paint because if you do, you will leave marks and they will not settle. So you will end up with lumps and divots and things in your paint. Now, it might not be an issue while it's at the paint stage, but when it comes to putting the resin on, it does become an issue. So you don't ever want to go back and try and touch things up um, unless it is still fully wet. So what I was saying here is I'm planning to do uh, some swipes and I was discussing doing a couple of different shapes. So I'm starting here with the Matisse Midnight Blue and we wanted lots of negative space in these paintings because we've painted the cafe a beautiful really deep blue it's almost like the midnight blue we wanted some colors to complement that but also to have lots of white space uh, to set that off so it doesn't look too dark and too enclosed in there so i've got the southern ocean blue going on next and you can see i've put the two swipes really close together or relatively close together uh, on the other large table that I did, I put them too far apart, so when I've um, tilted this out, they've actually spread most of the way across the table. So by putting them a little bit closer, you minimise the negative space in the middle, but you still get plenty on the edges. Uh, so the one on top I did there was the Josonia Colony Blue. Now I'm going in with TLP Constellation. Now, if you're interested in buying any of the this little piggy pigments that I'm using in these pores, you can always find those at fluid-art.co and I have a link to that in my description. And the paints that I'm using are all mixed up in the Shelly Art Bloom style. You can learn how to mix those paints up and take the Shelly Art course to learn how to do blooms and swipes at shellyart.com.au and if you use my discount code uh, shellyart 15 mgrimer you'll get 15% off the course. How good is that? So the next color going on now is this little piggy Aphrodite. And like I was saying, it's a beautiful, deep, rich red. Um, it's a little less red than Grenache, but still really vibrant. And it's actually my favorite color in these tables. It really stands out inside the cafe. Followed by TLP Athena. And again, that's that gorgeous new rose gold. And that's one of my favorite colors. I ended up buying three jars when it came out because it's just so good. Uh, now, what I didn't mention earlier, uh, sorry, going on with rose quartz now, what I didn't mention earlier was in the other tables I, have, I poured, I used Willy Wagtail Black Boom Gel Stain. Now, in those tables that I used the Boom Gel Stain in, every single one of those cracked uh, along the colours where the Boom Gel Stain was. So I don't know whether it was just because I had too much paint on there and the Boom Gel repelled the other colours, so it dried slower than the colours on top. I don't know. There were so many factors in these tables that could have gone wrong. So if a little bit of cracking revealing the black underneath was all I had, was, you know, the worst of my issues, that's an issue I can live with. Um, overall, they turned out really amazing. Now I'm just trying to figure out what the best way to swipe these is. On a couple of the other tables I did, I did one long swipe and then I quickly realized that by doing one long swipe, by the time I've got to the end of the swipe, I have no cell activator left. So I was just getting big smears of color. So what I decided to do here was start from the middle, work my way out and do two different swipes. So you can see that metallic gold cell activator looks really, really blotchy there, but it does separate over time and settle out. So that's just something to be aware of that not all cell activators form cells right away, especially metallic ones. You need to give them a little bit of a chance to uh, actually do their thing. So I'm not sure I was entirely happy with my decision there to do that swirl in the middle. It didn't look too bad, but um, I am a big fan of having cells all over the place. 
Uh, so that little blend of colour in the middle. It actually didn't turn out too bad and you can really see the constellation in that part. So I do go over it, um, I do get those cells back in there. Um, yeah. So what I might do now guys is I might stop talking for a little bit, I will fast forward the process because it's pretty much more of the same and I'll let you enjoy me struggling to tilt these pieces. Now I will say just before I go that these this table weighs maybe five kilos and it doesn't seem much but five kilos distributed across 1.2 meters and 600 uh, millimeters wide uh, or 60 centimeters wide that's a lot of weight and it's very very hard to tilt it's almost impossible to tilt them by holding the long edge so you really need to hold it from the short edges and just work your way slowly uh, move that paint and just be strong and do it um, if I had to do these again, I would definitely do them on a lower table so I have more leverage because trying to lift a piece this big was just too difficult. Alright guys, I'm going to put it in fast forward and I'll come back when I need to. Okay, so a couple of things to note while uh, while I'm pouring this is I'm trying to walk the paint from one side to the other and the reason I'm doing that is so I don't get too many warped cells in my swipes. Um, one thing that I'm not a big fan of is when your cells warp because they've been over tilted and, and uh, over stretched. Sometimes it's unavoidable, I totally get that. Uh, and in this case it was unavoidable, I was willing to accept that I was going to get warped cells. And you can see how my beautifully straight lines have now curved and warped out of shape uh, just because of the nature of the paint and how it was flowing um, and how much paint was still left on there. So this was one of the major concerns I had was actually getting enough paint off the surface. Uh, so I did tilt as much as I could and tried to get off as much as I can um, and you saw me go around with that pillow paint around the edges to make sure that it all flowed off nicely and I made sure that all of the edges are covered. So one thing to remember when you're doing a large piece like this is always tilt towards the corner that you would like to keep the most of the design first. So in this case I tilted to the top right corner because that nice streak of Aphrodite is what I wanted to keep in this piece. And that way when you're stretching everywhere else the rest of that paint will come off. Now I don't think I ended up keeping that corner part, we'll see in a minute. Um, and I will let you watch the rest of this. So jumping forward a couple of weeks now and we are ready to put the resin on our tables. Now this is a second table that I did, this is the second really long one that I did and you can see we've got a completely different result to the one that I just poured. And this one has a curved edge because this is the one that will be when you walk in the door to the cafe. I didn't want anyone to knock their hips on the side of the table because it does stick out just a little bit into the doorway. So what I'm doing is uh, applying a vinyl decal that I cut out on my Silhouette Cameo 4 machine uh, and this is my logo. Now while I was filming this I actually had COVID and this was early January so I wasn't feeling the best. My voice sounded absolutely horrible and I have cut that audio from this video because it was really really bad. Now. Uh, I'm just discussing where I'm going to place it here and I placed my logos in the bottom left of every table that I made and I kept that consistent across everything. So what I'm doing here is I'm peeling the contact uh, tape away from the top of the vinyl and it was being really really stubborn. So I grabbed a pair of 
very fine tip tweezers that I bought on Amazon. And if you just search for fine tip weeding tweezers, they will come up. And what was happening was my logo was still sticking to the backing sheet rather than to the transfer tape. And the transfer tape often has a much stronger bond than the backing. Uh, so that's where you want it to stay. And what I wanted to happen here was to just peel the backing tape off, leave the whole design on there, and then I reverse weed the uh, remaining wastage from the transfer tape. So you'll see I'm just going slowly here, pulling it as close to flat as I can. That will help get everything off for both taking off your backing tape and taking off the transfer tape. And I'm just going to use my fine tipped tweezers to get underneath that vinyl and to pull that vinyl off. So I'll fast forward that because you don't need to see that. And I'm just struggling a little bit here to get that last little bit of wastage off because my logo is made entirely of fine lines. Uh, it took a little bit of effort and sometimes they will rip, sometimes they will warp. So always print just a little bit extra if you think you're going to um, have trouble with the design. Now, just discussing here the tweezers, one has a really, really sharp tip and the other one is a little bit duller and it just makes weeding out vinyl either on the backing or on the transfer tape much, much easier. So I'm just going to apply that to the bottom left corner of my table and I'm just going to use my finger to press really hard on the actual vinyl portion. That's going to adhere that to the paint and if you are using vinyl decals on your paintings and you're finding that they are not sticking, that no matter what you do, even using a low tack transfer tape, that they just want to stick to the transfer tape, that will mean that your painting is not cured enough yet. So leave it for a couple more days, a couple more weeks and come back to it uh, and wait until all of that moisture has left the painting and your transfer will stick with no problems at all. So because these were cured for about three weeks, I had no issues with any of my vinyl transfers. And now it's time for the fun part. Now that the vinyl has been placed on there, I am going to resin my tables. So I have three tables that I filmed uh, the resin process for, and it's pretty much exactly the same as what I do for my coasters. So I mixed up 500 milliliters of resin per table for these because this one was the 1200 by 600 millimeter table, and the other two are the 800 by 800 millimeter ones. So they each took 500 milliliters of resin. And I really went heavy on the glitter with these. Normally I go really, really light, so they just give a light sparkle over the top. But as you'll see in the next two tables, I went really heavy on them because there is so much negative space over the white. I really wanted them to sparkle and also be a feature rather than just the swipes. So I'm using my hand here to evenly distribute the resin across the entire surface. And I recommend using your hand for larger pieces and for even small pieces because you can feel where there is no resin your fingers will get stuck almost like it's hitting a snag because it's not gliding over the resin because there is none there. And resin will not flow where resin hasn't been before. So it's very important that on this initial coat, you get every single uh, centimeter of that painting covered in resin. Also, because these are tables that will be used for functional use, uh, be sure to cover every square inch of the sides as well. I'm just going in with my heat gun now, making sure that there are no bubbles and also making the resin slightly warmer so it flows a little bit better and it will even out nicely into a perfectly flat layer. Now one thing I did learn is if you are doing a larger piece, be wary of or conscious of how much time has passed. Because they were so much larger, I did lose track of time a little bit and my resin started to set up. So when I went back to go and correct any little pinholes or bubbles or spots that I may have missed, the resin was too thick and you can actually see that in the finished, pro finished project. Um, so I'm not too fussed about it because they are for the cafe, but if it was for a client, I would definitely put a second coat of resin on. And overall, I was really impressed with how much coverage I got from the stone coat. Um, it really didn't um, take too much resin. I think I used about two, two and a half liters of resin for all six tables that I made, which I thought was actually brilliant. And there wasn't too much wastage at all. Now I will show you which stone coat resin I use in the next video. Uh, you can see the bottles in the back there. My The resin that I use isn't the art coat, it isn't anything special, it just says heat resistant epoxy uh, or stone coat epoxy on the bottles. Uh, if you do want to see the specific bottles I use, check out my other video called Resin Time. I'll try to remember to link that in the card. And yeah, I show you a close up of the bottles in there.
So I've just stepped off camera. I'm just mixing up the resin, giving it a good full three minutes of mixing. And I did indeed use 500 milliliters. And what I did with these pieces was my idea was to put uh, gold leaf or rose gold or copper leaf through the resin so that you can see the sparkle and really accent the um, the veins and the lacing in the pore and I chose not to do that because the copper leaf was leaving lumps on the surface rather than laying flat so I chose to scoop that out which you'll see in a second and just go with the plain pore which I think was the best decision in this case. Everybody, okay, so the tables are now finished. They have been installed in my cafe and it's time for me to show you what they look like. They turned out so, so amazing. And we've been getting so many compliments on them already. And you can see each individual color, they're really sparkling under the epoxy. And I'm really, really happy with how they turned out. They may not have been what I imagined in terms of how thick I made the lines but they they look beautiful they look gorgeous and everyone's been uh, really enjoying them um, we've been open for nearly a week now so they're holding up quite well very easy to clean and no dead scratches or marks on them so really happy with that you can see Athena and Aphrodite shining through this one the red and the the rose gold and I'm really surprised at how much constellation um, really stands out I absolutely love it there's this one over here so you can see we've all got different size tables and uh, I'll give you an idea of what the cafe looks like so this is our dining room I think they look absolutely fantastic in here and I um, can't wait to see what the customers say. So, as always, if you've liked what I've done with this uh, with this video and you're enjoying what I do, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I apologise that things have taken a bit longer than usual to get a video out, um, but this has been a really big project. Um, I should say that uh, underneath, these are just screwed on with a plate and some screws. These are just a standard hospitality um, base just a round weighted base with a pole and that screws up with a screw a threaded rod through the middle to hold that on. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.